Oh. Got to bring it down more. How's that? We're good. Okay. Hey, cheer spanks and bro tanks. Welcome to episode three of Q and J, where I answer your questions. Let's roll the intro. I never know what to do in this in-between time between the intro and the first question. If you have any suggestions, comment below. Let's get to the first question. <laughs> Lolita asks, how do you know if it's the voice of God or if it's your own will? Okay, we're getting deep right away. Sounds good, let's dive in. So the quick answer is, you can't know. You can't know 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt if it's your voice, or if it's God's voice, or if it's your neighbor's voice, or if it's Lilo and Stitch's voice. You never know. Oh, maybe. Oh, hang on, mean family. How do you do a Stitch voice? <laughs> But obviously there are ways that you can check. You know, you check in God's word, and if what you thought he said aligns with his word, that's a good sign. Maybe you lean a little more towards it. You check when you pray. You begin to see what his spirit is telling you. You check with pastors or wise elders. You get their opinion. It's not something that you can know 100%, but it is something that you can check and begin to discern. More than anything though, I think that the best thing that we can do in order to begin to discern whose voice is speaking in our heads and hearts is to make the decision to daily give our hearts and minds over to God in prayer. I believe that a heart that is submitted to God will begin to resemble the heart it's submitted to. So in a way then, God's voice and our voice don't necessarily have to be mutually exclusive, so long as we have a heart that is surrendered to God. Next question. At Christian Sophistry wants to know, do you ever get into arguments with people and how do you handle it? Well, Christian Sophistry, I'm going to answer your question with a question. Am I a human? The answer, yes. So yes, I do get in arguments with people. That just happens. If you're a human and you have not gotten in an argument with someone, you're a robot. As far as how I deal with it, I think of it in terms of who am I in the argument with. I think for probably 99% of people, the argument just isn't worth it. Because most people are not willing, even if you were to prove them wrong, they're not willing to change the way they think anyway, so I'm not really interested in wasting my breath. Now, if the argument is with someone who I'm very, very close to, or someone that I really care about, like my wife or my best friend, that's a little bit different. And in those instances, I always ask myself a simple question. It's a question that I ask my wife all the time. I say, it's okay for us to fight. It's okay for us to disagree. That's going to happen. But the question when we're in an argument is, are we fighting against each other or are we fighting for the relationship? Is this disagreement happening because we're trying to get better as a married couple or is it happening because we're trying to hurt each other or because we have this ego where we're trying to prove ourselves right? Most of the time it's me trying to prove myself right. So you got to ask those two questions. Is it worth it? And then if it is, then you have to ask, am I fighting against this person or am I fighting for the good of our relationship? Next question. Jenna asks, what would you say are your top three daily habits that contribute greatly to having a successful, meaningful day? First of all, I got to say, thank you, Jenna. This is one of my favorite questions I have ever answered. Second of all, let's talk about the things that contribute to a healthy, successful, meaningful day. For me, and I hope for all Christians, I know it sounds cliche, but it really does start with a quiet time. It starts with taking like 15 minutes. That's all I do is 15 minutes with the Lord, whether it's in his word, whether it's praying, whether it's worship through music, whatever it is. I notice an extreme difference in my mood, in my productivity, in how I treat other people. When at the beginning of my day, I take 15 minutes and I spend some quiet time with the Lord. It sounds cliche, but it will change your life. That's the way it is. The second thing would probably be sharing some form of art. On this channel, I just finished Vloguary, where every day I uploaded and shared a new video. Before that, I'd been, you know, writing blo daily blog posts for years. For me, influence 
is a drug. And I believe that a great way that I can have an influence in the world as an artist is to share the work that I create. When I see that something I've made or something I've created has had a positive impact on someone else, that's like a drug to me. That gets me high, that gets me excited, and I want to do more of it. So when, when I spend a day where I've shared something and I know that that thing I've shared has had an impact on someone, that's a meaningful day for me. That's a huge contributor to every other aspect of my life. And the last one has to be talking to Sweet Bear, talking to my wife. Whether we're talking about really serious things or we're talking about silly things or whatever it is we're talking about, just having my person that I can bounce things off of and bounce ideas off of and joke with and laugh with, that feeds my soul like nothing else can. I love you, Sweet Bear. Next question. Mark asks, where's John in 10 years? All right, Mark Hespin, if that is your real name. Where do I see myself in 10 years? For me, it's kind of a mix between two things. I hope that in 10 years, I am doing a bunch of new, exciting, different things. But at the same time, I hope I am continually pursuing the same things. What I mean by that is as an artist, I'm always looking for new and exciting projects that will stretch me and challenge me. And I never want to lose that. As I get older, I don't want to lose that sort of entrepreneurial go get them spirit. But at the same time, there are so many things in my life that I pursue daily right now that I hope that I'm still pursuing in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I hope that every single day, 10 years from now, I'm still pursuing being a better husband. I'm still pursuing building a life for my family. I'm still pursuing the Lord with all my heart. I'm still pursuing creating art and giving it back. So there's kind of this mix of like, I want to try new things, but I want to continue doing the things that really matter always and continually. So I guess, where do I see myself in 10 years? I see myself continually in pursuit? That's the last question. Thank you for watching episode three of Q&J. As always, comment below, ask more questions, tweet at me, follow me on Twitter. That's where I get a lot of these questions. So if you're not following me on Twitter, you probably should do that at some point. Also, subscribe to the channel. If you do, it would make me happier than a chicken at a meat packing plant. That was an insensitive joke to vegetarians and cows. I'm sorry. Last but not least, go Bulls. Last but not last but not least, keep being awesome.